Hi, I'm Patrick Hedger, Vice President of Policy at the Taxpayers Protection Alliance, and I'm so pleased to be joined by Miranda Dowell, who is the owner of Joe's Gourmet, and uh, we're so excited to be talking to Miranda and to have her tell us a little bit about her small business. So Miranda, uh, so tell us, what is your business and, and how did you get started? Sure. So um, first of all, uh, the name of our business is Joe's Gourmet. And uh, we make absolutely the best seafood breading on the planet. It's an amazing blend of herbs and spices that you can add to any type of seafood, chicken, or vegetable. Basically, anything that you can fry or bake, it enhances it, brings out a ton of flavor, and it's really, 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 really fun to cook with. Um, and we started our business, it was a family recipe, um, started here um, in Atlanta, Georgia. My family is from New Orleans, so we bring a lot of that interesting flavor to the table. Um, and we've been able to just grow it. We started in our local grocery store. Um, people loved it there. We started selling it in festivals and fairs and um, marketplaces and you know, literally sold 15,000 packs of it directly to people through hard work and grit before getting an opportunity to go into the grocery store. Um, and as it is today, we're in about uh, 3,500 doors and we have retail partners, including Walmart, Publix, Kroger, Albertsons, a -Hold. So nine times out of 10, you have um, a grocery store that you can go and check out our products and maybe have some fun with your family making something delicious, so. Oh, that sounds fantastic. That's a great story. Um, Thank I'm you. wondering, I'm wondering, the pandemic has affected businesses of all shapes and sizes. Yep. And I'm wondering how the pandemic has affected your ability to sell your products and services. And, and have you been able to utilize online platforms to continue to sustain and grow your business over the last year? I mean, honestly, um, the pandemic is has been a game changer. You have ha we've had to be very, very creative in getting our message out, um, creative and continuing to connect with our customers. Um, during the pandemic, it's been a time where people are spending more time at home, so there is, you know, an opportunity for us. And online marketing has been everything. Um, we utilize um, Facebook and Instagram and other um, digital marketers to communicate with our customer, um, to get feedback from our customer. Um, normally, we would spend a lot of time in grocery stores doing demos um, and meeting with them face to face. You can't do that. No one wants to eat samples. No one wants to be touched or talked to without a mask. Um, and so, you know, them being able to go out and, and meet us and see our smiles and, and go into the community like we normally would do to grow, we can't do that. So we have to simulate that in another way. Um, and so using Facebook, um, becoming more skilled at it um, has been essential for both our online sales and our in-store sales. So you know, you can't walk in and I give you this piece of really hot fried delicious shrimp. I mean, it's really easy to sell you if I do that. I can't do that. So <laughs> we've had to use Facebook to continue to grow. So you've been able to utilize online platforms to continue to sustain your business going forward, as you said. Have you found these systems are easy to use? You know, they do take some training. I'm going to be honest with you. You've got to really put some time into it um, to know how to reach, reach your customer. Who is your customer online? Your customer online can sometimes be a little bit different than in the store. In the store, it's kind of, you know, whoever walks in the door, right? Um, but online, it's like, um, I can really hone in and pinpoint on who I think would more likely interact and engage with my company. So that's one thing that I really, really love about it. But in order to understand all those processes and modules, you do need to put time into it. Thankfully, Facebook and Instagram have a lot of training modules with their Facebook blueprint. So there's a ton of classes that you can take either you know, on the platform or outside of the platform. And I'm wondering, have you found that focusing more on these online outlets has decreased your overall business expenses? Uh, how is it impacting your profit margin, if you don't yeah. mind me asking? 
it's a lot less expensive um, than, you know, physically hiring people to go into the grocery stores. Um, I think we're learning more about that algorithm. Um, and a lot of it is trial and error because, you know, as you're developing how to do that, there is a cost. I mean, everything that you got to learn costs, right? Um, but this pandemic has kind of forced us to learn that process. And as we're going down the road, we're finding out, hey, you know what, this could be a lot more cost effective for us in the long run. Yeah, it's, well, speaking yeah. of down the road, I, I assume that we're getting close to seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here. And hopefully we're all- God, getting- I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're getting back to normal at some point. Um, yeah. So I, I'm wondering, has this experience over the last year and, and your shift to needing uh, to work with these online platforms, has this changed the way that you think about your business in the long term? And, or has it changed your plans for how you're going to grow your business going forward, even assuming we get back to normal? It has. It definitely has. I mean, um, I don't think that, you know, you're breathing if as a business owner, you don't say this has changed everything. It's changed how we think about business. It's changed how we, um, you know, see our customers. Um, and it's changed. I think it's either it made you smarter and quicker and sharper, or you died. Like there was no, <laughs> there was no middle. So um, I would say I think coming out of this, there will be a much stronger presence in digital marketing than before. Um, And, you know, I'm really looking forward to the trajectory of my business, having learned these skill sets and, and, you know, not that we've mastered them, but we're in that process. Um, So I think, you know, having gone through these processes, I think we're in a really good spot. Yeah. So I'm wondering, has these new outlets, you know, have you found that they've sparked your creativity at all? I mean, are you pursuing any sort of new types of marketing that you never would have thought of before or different uh, avenues for your business that you you wouldn't have had uh, without these platforms? Totally. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing we learned is really honing in on our target market um, and how to use online tools, um, Facebook, Instagram, SEO. How do we use those things to identify that, that, that target market um, and then engage with them. And um, the internet is noisy. I mean, it really is. And so you have to, um, you know, kind of invent those avenues and this has sort of forced us into it. Yeah. I can't get by on my good looks anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh. Well, I'm sure you're doing just fine on those, I swear. But the, um, you know, I'm I'm wondering, something that we've heard consistently across the interviews that we've done here is exactly what you said. Find your target market, know who, figure out and with through trial and error who your customer is. I think that's some advice that's been pretty consistent for others that are in your similar position as a small business, as an entrepreneur that is utilizing these online services. I'm wondering if you have uh, any other personal insight or advice that you would give to a small business that's looking to utilize online platforms such as Facebook and Instagram, perhaps even uh, online retailers like Amazon, um, what advice would you have if they're shifting more away from having that brick and mortar in, in-person in presence uh, to working online? You know what, my, my advice would be um, just totally embrace it, you know? Um, and this is a skill set that you will need regardless in the world that we're going into. You're going to need to know how to market to your customer digitally, how to communicate with your customer digitally. It could be very lucrative if you kind of figure out what the formula is for your company. Um, we haven't totally gotten there, but I could totally see the potential as I'm kind of you know, going down this journey. Oh, that's great to hear. And, and you found that the companies themselves are, are willing to help? They are, yes. So, you know, there's all types of resources that they offer. Um, like I mentioned before, there's the Facebook Blueprint program, which is, you know, a ton of online courses. And, you know, like I kind of nerd out on those sometimes. You know, we'll go through a few modules. Um, if you pick up the phone, someone can help walk you through from an advertising standpoint and help you out. 
Um, there's also all kinds of third party companies, third party education. I think it's one avenue that's really, really good to invest in, invest in learning. So as we wrap up here, I want to give you the opportunity. We're a group that's based in Washington, D.C., and, and we're in touch with lawmakers and regulators. And, and really both sides of the aisle right now are starting to look at the Internet with a, a fresh fresh set of, of viewpoints and perspectives and, and a new openness to new types of regulation um, and that we haven't had in the past. What would you say to lawmakers, again, on both sides of the aisle that often have competing viewpoints on these issues of, of sure. how that will be governed? What would you want to say to them if you had the opportunity? Um, and, and what would you caution and what would you encourage? This is, this is your time and this is your platform. Sure. I mean, I would say, you know, from the consumer perspective, a lot of people are really afraid about um, their information being out there. But from a small business perspective, I would say advertising on a digital platform that's directly targeted to a customer that's more likely to engage in my business really levels the playing field for someone like me. So I can go out and I can reach my customer just like Coke can, just like um, you know, the big guys, Tide and Procter and Gamble, um, they can go out and target and reach their customer because they have huge budgets and they can mass market. I can start with Facebook or Instagram with just like $10 a day, right? Um, and I'm able to get a decent return on my capital. I'm able to go to that mom who will actually use my product instead of having to market it to you know a billion people and hope somehow that I'll get a buyer from it. When we don't have those tools and we don't have access to big, big budgets, there's just no way we can compete at that same level. So if we're looking about if we're looking at stimulating the economy, if we're looking at driving um, you know resources in the hands of people who are willing to take the reins, this is probably one of the best ways that you could do it, right? You know, because there does take some effort on our part as a small business, not every small business is going to do that. But if someone really wants to, to have an impact in their community, if someone really wants to build their business, they're able to do that using these tools. And then I take my increased revenues and I'm now able to, you know, hire more people or I'm able to, you know, go into more stores and have a bigger impact in various communities. So I think there's so many ways that you could look at it, but thinking of it from a, a small business perspective, targeted advertising is super important to us. I, I think that's an incredible message. And it's, again, it's something that we've heard from multiple small business owners. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're excited to hear about your success. Um, we're happy for you. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to share sure. your message with us and share it with the policymakers. Um, I want to also just, as we close out here, give you the opportunity, plug your products. Tell us where we can find your business, where we can find your products online. Now, you know, we love that. <laughs> <laughs> my product is an amazing product that you can use at home it's easy for baking or frying you can use it on fish shrimp chicken or veggies it's amazing you can get it in uh, your local walmart or amazon um, we also sell on there you can also um, get it on our website at www.joesgourmet.com Oh, fantastic. Well, I look forward to trying some soon. And uh, I, Miranda, I just, again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And uh, we, we look forward to hearing more about your success in the future. Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well.